Daniel Blair. Uh, we yeah. got a lot of calls tonight about this TV stuff. Uh, yeah. I think that video. was the rant. Maybe you yeah, gonna... <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, you, you. How long did you do it for? Total, I mean, nine years. Okay. Arena. My first year of Arena yeah. Cross was 2015. And and so you're done. That's it. And, and yeah. how did the Feld guys take it? How did the NBC guys take it when you said, "Hey, I just want to do this anymore"? Uh, I mean, it's it was it's, it's okay, and yeah. I'm and I'm still talking to them. Like they're they're my friends still, yeah. and I still care about the sport, and I think they care about me individually. So there's we're still like really really good. Yep. Um, did they understand it? Or um, were they? Probably not as much as maybe, <laughs> but then again, at the same time, I haven't been extremely transparent about all this. It's it's personal, and, and the reality is, is that I'm a I'm a very public person. Obviously, yeah. I come on here and I, dude, I say what I want to say. I have yeah. my own podcast three days a week where I, I'm very open and transparent. But you know, you you come to certain points in life where there's certain things that maybe you don't want to be as transparent about. Right. That may be a little bit more personal for me. So. Um, if you're looking for the juice, I mean, I'm not really ready to ready to go you don't there. Need to because I got my own theory. Yeah, you can have your own theory, but yeah. I, I would say if if I was to make it the most understandable is, you know, you you come to a point in life sometimes you get every you get lucky in a way where you're in a situation that forces you a little bit to look at your life differently and yeah. look through a different lens because you know how it goes when you're just moving forward. Your yeah. the scope's narrow. You're the, just focused on one thing. A lot of people in our industry have a a lot of people in our industry. You see it, um, and some of them are my friends. Because you get wrapped up into this racing, you think that you have to be there on the weekend. The gate won't drop without you. you mm -hmm. You're vitally important to the racing series. It's all you know. You just grab any job you need. You grab any job. You just don't care. You, you, it doesn't matter. Like Stepping back is fine, and, mm -hmm. and, and the races go on, and you, know, you still have your friends that you've made for a dozen years, mm -hmm. 20 years. I mean, again, like I'm coming up to that point too. Like I'm getting older. I'm going to have to step back. I have no problem doing that. But I think people stay in shitty situations. I'm not saying yours is, but stay in situations they don't want to be in or shitty situations because they feel the need to be in there. It's like a drug. They want to be at the races. Yeah. You know? I, no, that's, that's definitely true. Um, but for for me, it's it's a combination of like it's more some big macro life type things. I mean, yeah. well, I've had a lot of change in the last year or so. I mean, I sold my business. Yeah. That was man. That was that was hard, but needed. Uh, moved across the country. That was hard, needed. And then, like I said, this year, just the challenges I faced gave me a chance to kind of step way out and like look at my life from above. Because sometimes yeah. you're just looking straight forward, but I actually went and looked down and said, "All right." But I think you're good with I, like saying, "Hey, the I'm not happy." Yeah. And the races can go on without me. No, no, and 100, yeah. 100, percent and that that's the realization yep. I came to. But. Um, you know, when I look at how I got where I got, where I am now, what and what I want to do in the yeah. future, and where I'm going, it yeah. just, I really lucked out in a way because it was, it was feeling like a, a chapter needed to end right at the same time that opportunities were coming in that really solved a lot of issues um, with me and stuff. So I, it just, it really all makes sense. Um, but again, for, uh, for it to be fully understandable, I'd have to be more honest about it. And I'm just really not <laughs> he really doesn't need to, to do that. I already, I already know. That. I already okay, know. let's hear what you have <laughs> to say, because I'm curious of your thoughts. you're still going to pursue announcing? It, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, like, I'll, I won't be done. I'm going to dabble. You, you know not, what his bucket list is? Hmm. His major announcing the job ADN that he wants? Awards? Nope. Oh. That new Dallas? sport where they slap people nope. across the face. <laughs> I'm trying to get on that shit. He, he wants to be broadcast for the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Nah, that wouldn't yeah. work out either. Know, I'd be fired. That, no, just, he would be very angry. I'd be fired yeah. in the first quarter. <laughs> Why? Um, but you oh, did some you're just anger. Yeah. You did some lacrosse <laughs> stuff, right? You did some division. Yeah, like, um, like you've done some. So I did that this year, and I kept that a little low-key, but uh, I went and did some lacrosse on ESPN, yeah, right. which was <laughs> cool. I yeah. mean, interesting. And that has opened up some opportunities yeah. that I'd like to pursue closer to home that, uh, so I'll, I'll still dabble. I'll do arena cross TV yeah. forever. Cause you know, Glenn yeah. Seelig at digital realm, I'll do, I'll yeah. do whatever he wants for as long as he's ever doing TV. So I'm still going to do things. I just needed a, I needed a, a life change. And like I said, the business, the move, this yeah. kind of completed no, here, the ability for happened. me to move, uh, move on. So you've told me a little bit, this is my own theory though. You never, you never went into this with me, but I can see it. Okay. Cause I, I, this is, I can this see will this be stuff. good. No, no, listen. This will be good. You, we made tons of jokes about you filling the popcorn machine and cleaning the bathrooms, and there were jokes, but in a sense, they were very true. Feld had you doing a lot of things, okay? Uh, you're very good. You can either be an analyst or a play-by-play, -play, which is very rare. Like, usually we have the rider who's the play-by-play -play and, and Wygant, who's the flagger. 
he's the voice, right? <laughs> so, like, you, you could do both jobs, and you did both on Race Day Live. You stepped in, you did both. You, you, uh, you did the pit reporting on the TV show. You went in the booth. Um, uh, did you track walk stuff too? I thought you did something else. Wasn't there something else in there, a VIP thing or something? Mm, I thought there was something in there, not track press walk. Press conference. I mean, press, press conference. Yeah, yeah, press, so, press conference. You basically were a little bit like Feld was, and again, this is my words, not yours, but Feld's taking advantage of you a little bit because you're so good at everything and you can do everything. You're vaulty, you're versatile. So, you, like anybody, you want to progress up the ranks. You get, a, you get in the booth two years ago as a, as, a, as a play-by-play guy. They give you a shot for a couple of races. You do a good job. You work with Ricky well. It works out really well. I'm guessing you don't want to be the race day live, the press conference guy, the pit reporter guy anymore. You want a job like that. It's easier. It's probably more money. It's more prestigious. And you're, you're good at it. But... Listen, when NBC, and again, uh, Lee does a great job. He's, a, he's an iconic voice in motorsports for NBC. Todd Harris, he has a long Supercross background from back in 2000s. Todd is a great guy, and I enjoy talking to Todd. However, he's coming in from London. He's living in England. Did you know that? No. Yeah, he lives in England. He's flying in from England. He's, he's not up on our sport 24-7. You can tell. He had right. some rough patches, okay? But they're still picking Todd over you. They're giving you a few shots. But in my mind, you walked away because you're like, look, man, you guys are using me for everything. You're using me for like you're using me like a like a rented mule here. And <laughs> and 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 I want the booth. And you think so little of my ability to be in the booth that you're flying a dude from London in who doesn't really know our sport backwards and forwards like he should. I hope Todd doesn't get mad at me for saying that, but that's how I feel. And so you're probably just like, hey, man, like if you, if you guys aren't going to – like I see – like you're just going to – hey, we got old Daniel. Hey, the popcorn machine. You know, hey, Daniel. Hey, press yeah. conference. Da- yeah. Like so I think you took a stand and you were like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good, guys. Like I'm good. That's my own theory. <laughs> yeah. That's my own theory. Seems like a good one. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Jim. I like that one. Like, I, okay. it's, 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 like if, if you're, you if you're back, you, if I'm you, you're like, okay, Lee, I get. He's iconic. He's, he, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, you know, I get it. But you're choosing to fly a dude from London? Yeah. But here, here's, <laughs> Over me? here's what I think that, <laughs> okay. you know, like you, you look at Daniel. Yeah. He's 100% committed to Supercross. Yeah. 100%. Lee Diffie, great, does a great job. He does everything. Yeah. The Olympics, everything. He's still not 100% committed. Just just Supercross. Same with Todd. He does a yeah, lot he, yeah. of everything sailing. else. Sailing. He's doing sailing. Yeah. Daniel is only going to get – does a great job in the booth. He's only going to get better as time goes on. Yeah. And they just weren't giving him that but time, I, think, I guess. But I think if you're somebody at NBC, Sam Flood or, or somebody, you like Lee – being associated with motocross, it gives it a certain cachet yeah. because it's the it's the Indy 500 guy, right? It's the Rolex 24 hour guy. You know, Lee's been in the sport a long time. Indy Indy C car, yeah. Indy So car I think series. if you're the NBC guy, you're like, look, we really want Lee at Anaheim oh. One and Lee at this race. You know, we want we want people to know that Lee is calling our sport. It's important, quote unquote. Right, right. I don't necessarily agree with it, yeah. but I could see corporate thinking. Sure. But Todd, yeah. who who really you know yeah. again. He's a good guy, and he's he's got background in our sport. But you could tell, yeah, he I, was rough. Uh, you know, I I uh, I associate Todd with uh, college football. Yeah, that's where he's yeah, yeah. big at. He yeah. does a great yeah. job. Yeah. and let, that's like if Daniel was to call a, a college football yeah. game, it's hard it's to not, parachute it's in. Have, yeah, no, it's not yeah. gonna it's not gonna happen. But you know, he knows a hundred percent of the riders inside and out, yeah. all their backgrounds, Absolutely. and yeah. yeah, I don't I don't know. He would definitely know uh, PRMX. In those riders, yeah. But so that's my theory, Daniel. So you can, yeah, you can, you know, you're not going to talk about it, but that's my theory. Well, maybe some callers got us some theories. <laughs> don't, don't answer any. Oh, really? Right? Why? Oh, no. Uh, just, yeah, because oh, I know no, where they're no, going. Here we go, Mike. Yeah. Mike, what's up, Mike? You got a TV theory? 